Jazzy TV. Everybody was worried about me yesterday, and I, I appreciate that because the show was so late uh, getting up, and I think everyone was concerned that uh, this uh, this year channel, this year platform, supposedly a platform, it's actually a publisher. Anyway, worried that they um, gave me the right foot of fellowship because of my political commentary. Actually, no, that was a reasonable fear to have, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for caring. Actually, it was the, the, the publisher was very slow uploading yesterday. Usually, it takes like one minute of upload time for every minute of video. 20-minute video, 20 minutes upload on YouTube with the internet that I have here. So, yesterday's video should have taken 19 minutes to upload. I start uploading it, and the thing says two hours and a half. What? Yeah, I, I tried three times to upload it, and it kept giving me crazier time. So I just had to let it go, put it on automatic publish, and I went out for my run. So I apologize for that. It was out of my hands. Yes, I use... Well, I try to do shows the day before. That's ideal. The day before, then everything's in the can before the next day. That's ideal. But sometimes I don't do my best unless I'm up against the wall. So in the morning, and I'm, I'm at my best in the morning. So at my best, up against the wall, that's usually how it happens. It's how it's happening right now. So I hope you get this on time. I'll do what I can. This is Martin Zender, and you are at MZTV. I'm going to pursue... Tie up a loop from 1 Timothy chapter 1 concerning Paul saying that he became a pattern of those about to be believing. I got some insight into that that I don't think you're going to hear anywhere else. Let's see how that goes. But before I do that, there's a little news piece out of uh, Great Britain, the UK. We have uh, Paul Joseph Watson saying this about the, about the medical masks that are all the rage turning people into compliant sheep or in the example i'm going to give you today cows paul joseph watson as we highlighted yesterday the f word advised americans to begin wearing two masks saying that it quote makes common sense unquote for more than one layer to be effective wow well, why stop there? Exactly. However, the F word was outdone by researchers at Virginia Tech, get this, who said that two face masks only provide 50 to 75% efficacy and that three masks should be worn to achieve 90% effectiveness. You know what I'm going to say next? Ha oh, ho, but I've been preempted here. Why stop at 90% exactly? My thought exactly. According to Dr. Scott Siegel, Chair of Anesthesiology at Wake Forest Baptist Health. The Baptists had to get in here somewhere. In Winston-Salem, North Carolina, even that may not be enough. Hey, we need to protect ourselves 100% or above we need to know that when we go outside, nothing can happen to us. I think we ought to wear helmets with lightning rods on it that would, yeah, that would transfer the power of the lightning bolt should we be struck. And there's always a chance down into the ground rather than electrocute us. I have for years said that we ought to cover ourselves in bubble wrap, wrap ourselves in bubble wrap. They don't call it bubble wrap for no reason. And then, after all these safety precautions have been taken, don't leave the house. <laughs> According to Dr. Scott Siegel, Chair of Anesthesiology at Wake Forest Baptist Health in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, even that may not be enough. If you put three or four masks on, it's going to filter better because it's more layers of cloth. It takes a college degree, an advanced degree, to come up with wisdom like this. It it's more layers of cloth, so you'll really be protected. However, Siegel's advice is contradicted by CBS4. Oh, B, 
big news station has this to say. CBS4 medical director, Dr. Dave Hanida, who said, quote, three masks may be going too far. Why, Dave? Why, Dave? Why do you say that? Since that could interfere with the ability to breathe. Woohoo! Well, there's a thought. Let me ask you this, Dave, and the rest of you, if four masks may inhibit the ability to breathe, why wouldn't one do the same thing? Paul Watson now comments, but why concern yourself with trivial matters such as breathing when the wearing of multiple face coverings is so effective in delivering social media clout? Oh, all these guys want to get on TV and up the ante. Not only that, but the people who wear the masks are after social acceptance. No, more than that. The, the accolades, the, 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 the respect, the awe of society when they see, look how much that person cares. Wearing four masks, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, where does it stop? The NBC also notes how the general public has been conditioned. This is all part of the end time deception, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the general public has been conditioned to comply with face mask mandates as part of the new normal. BS, BS. Oh, for me personally, absolutely nuts. Quote, acceptance of face coverings has come a long way over the past year. Americans increasingly use them. This is what I hate as a way to make fashion statements or to show love for their favorite sports team. This insane article ends this way. What will Americans tolerate next? Indeed, great question. In China, more than a million people have undergone, quote, anal swab coronavirus tests. Yes, anal swab coronavirus tests because authorities say they are more effective. In China, they take Q-tips and put them up your ass to get a more effective test. And what test? And what do the Chinese do? They bend over and take it. When is it going to stop? I, I assure you this, that these people who say wear four masks, it's going, people are going to obey. People are going to comply. Where will it end? 10 masks is coming, 12, 13. If they mandate, if they say 13 masks is recommended by the F word in order to work together to stop the spread of the Black Death, people will do it. People will do it. And they will be able to tell if you have only 12 masks on and they will shame you for only wearing 12 masks. Where would it end? I think that if they came out saying 30 masks, people will do it. And you have to wonder, at what point does it penetrate the cow brain of, the, of society at large? At what point do they would they start to even ask the question, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can't breathe. I think it would take 50. I have 50 masks here. And I have a feeling that if, if people were told to wear 50 masks, they would put, they would put 50 masks. They would put 50 masks. And some, at some point, I think the cow brain would eventually be stimulated enough. So, wait a minute. I can't and they would die and they would die before they completely questioned before they revolted against the insane suggestions and god forbid mandates my brain kicked in at one mask first timothy chapter one I had to get that off my chest thank you first timothy Chapter 1, Paul said that he became a pattern of those about to be believing. Let me read it here. The Lord overwhelms me, I'm in 1 Timothy 1.14, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Faithful is the saying and worthy of all welcome that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, foremost of whom am I. But therefore, I didn't emphasize this enough yesterday, therefore, was I shown mercy that in me, the foremost, Jesus Christ should be displaying all his patience for a pattern of those who are about to be believing on him for life aeonian. The reason Christ chose Saul the Pharisee because 
to this to give this message to because this message was to be in its essence a message of grace transcending grace grace that no one had ever seen before or considered before and so he made sure that this guy was the most adamant enemy of god and christ the most arrogant the most murderous enemy of god and christ that ever walked the planet therefore was i shown mercy because in this guy would be displayed all of God's patience and all of God's grace. He was the ultimate demonstration. If you're going to give somebody a message of grace that said, this is what grace is. Grace is favor granted to those who deserve the opposite. If you deserve it, it's not grace. If you deserve it, it's not grace. The root word there, the Greek word is charis, the root word is joy grace an apprehension of it an apprehension that there's nothing you can do to get out of it in fact the more bad things you do the more grace comes to the fore i didn't invent that that's romans 5 20 where sin increases grace super abounds grace is like a ship it it if you increase the water underneath it, it just rises it rises higher than the water the top of the ship is always going to be above the water line well, we'll fix that. We'll put more water on it. We'll flood it. it. Sorry, it doesn't work. The ship keeps rising and rising and rising. This is what grace does in response to our sin. To grace, sin is a playground. Grace sees more sin and says, "Whoo hoo I'm going to have a field day now. I'm going to have a field day with this. I'm going to teach this sin a lesson. I was like, what are you going to do? Strike it dead? What are you going to do? Throw rocks at it, stone it till it dies? No, that's what law does. Grace says, I'm going to overwhelm it, and I'm going to increase your favor with God. I'm going to make God like you even more. You say, that's impossible. Well, no, that's the fact. And it's so shocking. It's so true, and it needs to be so so communicated in a concrete way. Going to get to the concrete here in a second with the pattern. That God purposely hardened this guy so hard hardened him so hard that now therefore was i sh therefore was i shown mercy what's with the the therefore because god had built someone who was a calumniator who was a persecutor and an outrager in order to demonstrate the nature of this amazing gift this amazing quality called grace that very few people appreciate. Christians don't appreciate it. They think it's conditional. They almost put grace and law in the same boat as if they're synonyms. Well, grace is grace, law is law, but the way they teach it, it's synonymous with law. It's still conditioned on your behavior i know they believe this because when you when they ask the question so you're saying everybody's saved in the end everybody's going to be saved god's uh, god's uh conciliated to the world but what if somebody what if you rape a five-year-old what if you rape a five-month-old what if you you know all these what ifs what ifs what ifs that just shows you they don't actually believe that grace has the audacity to cover it has the audacity to rise above it when somebody says to me i recommend this to you when somebody says to me, oh, so you're saying I could just go out and kill five people and I'm still saved and grace still covers me. My answer is, you got it. Yes, you're finally understanding grace. In fact, go out and kill 10 people. Try that. See if that works. Like the masks. Oh, if 10 works, maybe 20 is better. Maybe 20 is better. Maybe that will show you that grace rises above. I'm not recommending... I don't want anybody to say Martin Zender was on his video recommending that we go out and kill 20 people. No, but you could, and it wouldn't affect God's opinion of you because it's not based on your work. It's based on Christ's work, and God loves grace. I got pure lemon juice here. This is hardcore right here because obviously the almond milk wasn't working to help my throat problem. This is Santa Cruz organic pure lemon juice. I got just a little bit left in the bottle here. I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to drink this pure. This is uh, this is not from concentrate. Huh? No. Well, that's good. See, I like that. I like the hardcore stuff. 
So this is God's trophy boy. This is God's poster boy for grace. But here's what, here's a point that, that I that I want to make. See, you went through all that crap at the beginning. I said with the mask, I had to get that off my chest. But, and you liked what I just said about grace and that Saul was the perfect guy to call because he probably did kill 20 people. Seriously, this guy probably did kill people or had them killed those who believed in Jesus Christ, who he hated. Saul the Pharisee hated Jesus Christ. You, you get that, right? So Paul says he's a pattern of those who are about to be believing in him, which is everybody. Everybody's about to be believing in him. <laughs> yeah, when you, hear, when you hear the word about, you have to wonder God's concept of time. About to be believing? That includes everybody in the next 2,000 years. Yeah, but to God, that's about. A thousand years is as a day. A day is as a thousand years. So the last 2,000 years, get this, the last 2,000 years have passed in the mind of God as two days has passed to us. It's happening lickety-split to God like this. To us, it's interminable. Seems that way. We keep going and going and going. But to God, it's like you know, two days ago. So he's not slack concerning his promises. This is what happens when I tell people that this guy saw the Pharisee was a pattern of God's grace. They say, well, you, you're wrong about that, Martin Zender. So what do you mean I'm wrong? What? I said, well, not everybody gets thrown down to the ground. Not everybody sees a light brighter than the noonday sun. Not everybody gets blinded for three days and has to go to Damascus and have their sight restored by some nobody dude named Ananias. Well, that's true. In those exact particulars, not many people I know get struck down on the road to Damascus, literally, as far as them coming to faith. But it's just, this is the revelation, get ready for this. It's just as dramatic. Do you think it is any less dramatic for someone's mind to change? The mind, the most powerful part of our being. As a man thinks, so is he. It's like a bastion. It's like a castle with a moat around it. It's hard to penetrate it with thoughts once it's been established in its own thoughts. You have to remember this. Saul on the road to Damascus not only got knocked to the ground, blinded, but his thoughts changed. In fact, these other things, I consider them ancillary. I consider them accessories to the, to the main, quote, crime, unquote, the most beautiful crime ever committed which is this that this man repented don't get excited by that it just means to change one's mind it's not a theological term at all it's a two cent greek word you pull out of a paper bag at the greek word store it's used anybody that changed their mind yeah susie was going to wear a red dress but she repented of it she repented of that and she wore a pink one yeah that's what it means to change your mind that is as epic as a guy being shoved to the ground and blinded. That's how, that's how amazing it is. So everybody who's ever believed after this guy has their own road to Damascus experience, but it happens in the thoughts. It happens in the mind. And it's just as dramatic. It's just as involuntary. I repeat, it's just as involuntary. It's in like manner. Paul was a pattern in, in, the, in the essential part of this that God did it apart from the man's will. Apart from the man's will. Everybody admits with this guy that, well, no, of course, that is a perfect example of God's, God's sovereignty, God's action overriding someone's desire, someone's own will. That's an obvious example. But, but, and then they go on to tell me, but he was an exception. No, he himself says he's the pattern. People trip at that because they say, well, I wasn't on my way to Damascus. I didn't end up getting, my, getting blinded and having my sight restored by some no-named who happened to have a name, Ananias. Oh, but it's not, it's not the physical aspects. It's the changing of the mind aspects. It's the changing of the mind. That's not easy to change the mind. Because everybody's set in their ways. Oh, Revelation 17, 17. God causes 10 kings to form his opinion. The 10 kings of the 10 nations of the end days. 
of the final years of millennium six, God causes 10 kings. Read it. Revelation 17, 17. God causes, causes active 10 kings or yeah, 10 kings to form his capital H opinion. He changes their minds. Boom. Scripture says like rivulets of water are the thoughts of kings and God moves it as a man moves water. The thoughts of people, the actions of people, the plans of people are like water in the hands of God and he just adjusts his hands and boom, they change their minds. It's just as dramatic. The physical things don't have to be here. The point for point for point experience that Saul had they don't have to be here for him to be a pattern. It's the changing of the mind. The changing of the mind of anyone who comes to faith. Christians don't believe this. They don't believe this. It's completely of God. It's involuntary on the part of the person who believes, as involuntary as it was that this man on his way to kill Christians, on the way to Damascus, was struck down and blinded by a light brighter than the noonday sun. It's just as involuntary. But people don't know that because it's not as dramatic. It's not as dramatic. Oh, but it is. That's what they don't realize. It is just as dramatic as Saul's experience. To have the mind changed. To go from thinking that you can save yourself, that you contribute to the evangel, to go from thinking that to this is a work of God. And apart from this outside this outside invasion of my world from the divine world, apart from that, I would still be stubborn, unmerciful, proud, arrogant, Romans 3, no one is seeking out God, no, not one. It's violence. It's benevolent violence. And this is what happens every time someone believes God is exercising a benevolent violence upon the mind of people who, left to their own, don't want him, don't need him. But he changes their minds, yes, every single day. Every single day. As easily as a man can flick a stream of water where he wills. If this doesn't comfort you, then whew, I don't know what 